Hi there. In this short topic video, we'll take a brief look at the costs that arise when a business suffers from poor quality. We know that in business things go wrong. A product breaks down or a product's delivered late or the quality of the customer service delivered isn't up to customer expectations. Of course, things go wrong in business, but the issue with poor quality is that if it happens often enough or if customers begin to expect it from your product or brand, then the business is likely to suffer from a competitive disadvantage compared with the competitors who have better quality. So a key point to remember about poor quality is that poor quality is a source of competitive disadvantage. There are lots of ways it happens and I'm sure as a consumer you'll have come across some of these yourselves. A product that fails, it breaks down or it doesn't do what it was expected to do. Perhaps it doesn't last as long as you expected it to. A product that you order that's delivered late or not at all, or not in a state you can use something. A product that is simply difficult to use with poor instructions. Or in the service sector, all kinds of issues of poor customer service. What happens with poor quality is that it results in business costs. So the key line of analysis between quality and competitiveness is that poor quality results in an increase in costs, which in turn can make a business less competitive than the competition. The kind of costs we're talking about are reworking or remaking a product or repairing it, the cost of refunding the customer for a good that was not up to scratch or service that wasn't, wasn't satisfactory, the cost of replacing a good. But of course, perhaps most importantly is the last one on the screen there. It's the cost of lost customers, a reduction in customer loyalty. And maybe even worse, when customers go on to maybe social media sites and share their experience of poor quality with friends and family and acquaintances, which has an even more dramatic effect potentially. Some great examples here on the screen if you need some evidence of how poor quality can lead to significant business costs. Just reading down the line there, you can see that poor quality affects a whole variety of industries from laptop and computer makers through to toy manufacturers. And of course, we've seen in the car manufacturing industry a significant cost of poor quality with a very high number of product recalls due to faulty uh, parts and faulty software. Perhaps one of the most uh, striking examples of poor quality and the costs associated with that was the mis-selling of payment protection insurance by a large number of UK based financial institutions like banks and building societies. The costs of that failure of quality are still rising, but at the time of writing are almost 40 billion pounds. And of course, we've seen more recently uh, shocking failures in quality in the leisure sector, such as the Alton Towers roller coaster disaster. So a key point to remember is that poor quality can result in substantial business costs, which in some cases may even threaten the viability of a business. So to summarize, poor quality essentially damages a business's competitiveness, particularly if it's sustained. Every business will suffer from the occasional lapse in quality. That's to be expected. But if it's sustained, then that's bad news because it leads both to financial costs, but more importantly, in the long term, to damaged business reputation and a loss of customer loyalty. So that when we look in future videos at how quality can be managed through quality control and quality assurance, a key point to remember is that you're trying to avoid the costs of poor quality. That's been a short and hopefully useful introduction to the costs of poor quality.